Hello, second grade smarties, and welcome to Wit and Wisdom Module 3 Civil Rights Heroes Lesson Number 10. Today, our pizza bite question, our content framing question is what does a deeper exploration of topic reveal in I Have a Dream? So today we are going to exploring the main topic of Dr. King's dream in his I Have a Dream speech. So to get comfortable with identifying and finding the topic, let's listen to the word America again and see if we can find the topic of this word, this song. So the words are going to be listed during the song too. I want you to pay attention to the words. What are you noticing in the words to help find that topic. Here we go. All right. I want you to think, what are some words that you heard over and over again? I heard the word freedom a lot. What, what was that song all about? Freedom? Where? What was what? It talked about freedom a lot, but where is the freedom? Tell me in the up puzzle. Where is this freedom with all this beautiful scenery? What freedom are they talking about? They're talking about the freedom in America, right? The freedom to the freedom to see all the beauty in America, the freedom that we got by fighting for our country. So this song is all about America's freedom. So we are able to listen to the words of those so of that song to help us find that topic. That topic of that song is that America's freedom was fought for, right? America's freedom was fought for in wars. And because of that because of that fighting and because of that hard work and not giving up, America is free. All right, we don't want to listen to that song again. We want to move on. So we are going to be zooming in and zooming out today to find the topic of our text. Another way that we can find topics or gather information is to look at photographs. So I want you to look at these two photographs on the screen. What do you notice about these photographs? What are some things that you are seeing 
in these photographs? Tell me in the Ed puzzle. So both of these photographs take place during the March on Washington. Something that I notice is that the photographer, the person taking the picture in this left picture, I notice that it's really close in, that you can see what is happening on this newspaper, but you can also see up close people standing around in Washington, D.C. In this picture, the photographer is zoomed out, right? It's zoomed out so you can see all the people that were gathered to listen to Dr. King speak. So photographers can use their point of view. Remember, point of view is understanding what you see from what you can see and what you are thinking from your perspective. So from the point of view of these photographers, one looked in closely and it says in this newspaper, they're pouring in from all over, talking about the people coming from all over the United States to go to the March in Washington, giving really close details. But then some photographers can zoom out so you can see a bigger picture. So that is exactly what we are going to do with our text. We are going to zoom in and zoom out, look at the smaller details and the big picture to find the topic of Dr. King's dream. So we are going to use Martin Luther King Jr. in the March on Washington. That was our last text. And we are also going to use I Have a Dream to find the main topic of Dr. King's speech. So we are going to look at our first text with Dr. King to get some information to help support our topic. The high point of the day comes at three o'clock. The crowd grows quiet. A young black man takes the stage. He looks at the crowd. There are people as far as he can see. The man's name is Martin Luther King Jr. He is a preacher and the son of a preacher. He has grown up in Georgia. He knows all about what it is like to be a black person in the South. Dr. King is a man of peace, but he is also a fighter. He doesn't use his fists or weapons, he uses words. In the South, Dr. King has led many other protests. One was a march in Georgia. Another was a protest against a bus company in Alabama. He has been put in jail many times. There are threats against his life. Some people want him dead, but that does not stop him. Today in Washington, Dr. King speaks words of hope. His speech is about a dream for a better world. Keep that in the back of your head. He says, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin. He hopes that people will see all children for who they are or for, and for the things they do in their lives. It is his dream that one day little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and girls. So in this text, I want you to think, did this text give us more, more words directly from the speech or did it give us more background information about Dr. King's speech? Did it use a lot of words from his speech or did it give us more information about Dr. King and his speech? Tell me what you're thinking in the, in the uh, puzzle. So this text gave us background information about Dr. King and the reason for his speech, right? So this, so this text told us about Dr. King. They told us about how he was from Georgia and that he was a preacher and the son of a preacher and he led protests and was peaceful. It also told us why he gave his speech, what the topic of his speech was. Let's look. It says his speech is about his dream for a better world. What was the topic of his speech? His dream for a better world. Now, that is zoomed out. 
That is the background information about the speech in Dr. King. Now we are going to zoom in to the text, I have a dream, to find what his dreams for the world were. What were those specific dreams that he had? Also, looking at this text, this gave us background information, but it did have words from Dr. King's speech. So these quotation marks, do you guys see that? These little, these little lines at the top, those are quotes. Those are the exact words that Dr. King said. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin. That was one quote. Here are more words that are directly from his speech. It is his dream that one day little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and girls. Hmm. Here is the text, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. What do you notice about the text on this page in I Have a Dream and this text in Martin Luther King Jr. and the war March on Washington? What do you notice about these two texts, these pages? Tell me in the Ed puzzle. It's the same, right? So the author of this book, he used quotes. He used words from Dr. King to support his writing. This text is Dr. King's speech. This was from Dr. King's point of view. So the authors of texts can use words from people and from other books to support their topic. All right, so we know that the text, I Have a Dream, is the, is the written form, an illustrated form of Dr. King's speech. Martin Luther King Jr. in the March on Washington gives us the history and the background information about Dr. King's speech. How do the two texts connect? What do both of these texts talk about what are what do they both talk about tell me in the puzzle they both talk about dr martin luther king jr and his dream for a better world they talk about his dream for equality and freedom for all people so i want you to think about dr king's dream and how he zoomed in and zoomed out who were the people that we talked about with his dreams? In his text, I in his speech, I have a dream. It talks about his dreams for who? If we zoom in, he talks about his dreams for children, right? But then he zooms out and he has a bigger dream for the world. So he zoomed in by talking about his dreams for children and what he hoped for people. But then he talked about his dreams for the nation. So yesterday we organized this, these facts, these information, <laughs> these pieces of information about Dr. King's dreams for children that's zoomed in and then zooming out his dreams for the nation. So zooming in on his dreams for children, he said that he dreamed that all God's children will sing my country tis of thee with new meaning. His four children would not be judged by the color of their skin. And that little black boys and black girls would join hands with little white boys and white girls. That was zoomed in dreams, right? Those were his dreams specifically for children. Then he zoomed out. He talked about his bigger dreams for the country for America. His dreams for America were that the nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. Mississippi will become an oasis of free, an oasis of freedom and justice. And freedom will ring from the Rockies of Colorado. Remember, we held up our hands every time we heard the words, let freedom ring. We heard those words when he was talking about let freedom ring 
all over the country. So we are going to be using these zoomed in dreams and the zoomed out dreams to answer this question in our next writing task. What was Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream? So we are going to be using this information to help us answer that question. All right, so we have been zooming in and zooming out this entire lesson. So we are going to be zooming in, looking closely at this photograph, and we're going to be zooming out to find the big picture. What is the meaning of this photograph? So we are going to zoom in by thinking about the shapes that we see, the space in this photograph, and the dark and light areas to help us get an idea of why this photographer took this picture. So looking at this picture, what are the largest shapes that you see in this picture? Looking at this photograph, what are the largest shapes that you see? Tell me in the puzzle. So the largest shapes that I see is this big storm cloud and this big hill. So those are the two biggest shapes. That is where our attention goes to first. What are the smaller shapes in this picture? Look closely. What are the smaller shapes in this picture? Tell me in the Ed puzzle. The people, right? They're smaller. As, as the... As the marchers keep going, the, we can't see that many people as it keeps going back, right? So the, the photographer wanted to draw our eyes to the, to the big shapes that we see, but to also focus on how long that line of marchers were. Okay, so the largest shapes were the clouds in the hill, right? The smallest shapes are the people walking on the hill. Artists and photographers use space to draw viewers' attention. So when we're talking about space in art, we're not talking about outer space. We're talking about the areas around, between, or within shapes or forms in a work of art. So we can look at the space, the areas in a photo, in a photograph to understand the work of art a little bit more. So I want you to think, where do we see the largest spaces in this photograph? Where is the largest empty spaces in this photograph? In the top and the bottom, right? In the top, it has these big storm clouds. And in the bottom, we see the hill rolling down, right? We can't see the bottom of the hill, but we know it's a really large hill. So thinking about the, the view of this photograph, okay, James Carolus' point of view when he took this photograph was where? Did he take it up high looking down? Did he zoom in on faces? Was he far away from the marchers? Was he underneath the marchers? Where do you think Carolus's point of view was? Where do you think he was when he took this picture? Tell me in the puzzle. It looks like he kind of took it at the bottom of this hill, right? And zoomed to where you could see the sky, but you could also see the line of marchers, right? He didn't zoom in on specific marchers he wanted to show the entire he wanted to show as much as he could of those lines of of that line of marchers so how does his point of view oh my goodness marty's i am so sorry how does his point of view affect how we see the marchers what does his point of view help us see in this photograph what do you think? What does his point of view help us see in this photograph? Tell me what you're thinking in the Ed puzzle. So his point of view helps me see that there were a lot of people marching. There were, it looks like there were maybe hundreds of people marching. Look at the lightness and the darkness in this photograph. Is there more darkness in this photograph or more light in this photograph? There's a lot of darkness. Hmm. I want you to think, how do you think the marchers were feeling 
marching on a stormy day, on a cloudy kind of, they might have, it, it might have been storming in this picture. What do you think the marchers were feeling on this page? Tell me in the puzzle. All right, Smarties. And as always, let's wrap up this lesson with a deep dive. All right. So we are going to be examining adjectives and adverbs. So I am going to read two sentences. One sentence uses an adverb and the other sentence uses an adjective. Let's see if we can figure out which one is which. All right. Dr. King was a brave man. Dr. King acted bravely. All right, so we hear that base word brave in both sentences, but how those words are used are different, right? They're describing different things. So in doctor, in the first sentence, Dr. King was a brave man. What is the word brave describing? It's describing man, right? Dr. King was a brave man. What kind of man was Dr. King? He was brave. Hmm. Do adjectives or adverbs describe nouns? Which one describes a noun, an adjective or an adverb? Tell me in the puzzle. Adjectives, right? Adjectives are words that describe a noun or pronoun. All right. So brave is describing the noun man. All right. Dr. King acted bravely. What is bravely describing? How Dr. King acted. Ooh, adverbs describe how something is done, right? So adverbs describe how an action is done, or it can describe another adverb. So how did Dr. King act? He acted bravely. All right, so we are going, we are going to be trying to figure out if the underlined words in these sentences are adjectives or adverbs. Remember, adjectives are words that describe nouns, people, places, things, or animals. Adverbs are words that describe how a verb is done. And remember, a lot of times adverbs end in that suffix L-Y. All right, so here we go. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Dr. King spoke proudly to the crowd. Proudly. Hmm. Does that describe a noun or how something is done? So is proudly an adjective or an adverb? Remember, an adjective describes a noun, and an adverb describes how something is done. Tell me in the puzzle. It's an adverb, right? Dr. King spoke how? He spoke proudly. Proudly describes how Dr. King spoke. Okay, our next one. Dr. King was a kind man. What is kind describing? Is kind describing a noun, a person, place, or thing, or is it describing how something is done? Okay, so is kind an adjective? Is it describing a person, place, or thing, or is it an adverb? Is it describing how something is done? Tell me in the puzzle. It's an adjective. An adjective is a word that describes a noun. Kind describes man. Dr. King was a kind man. All right, our next sentence. Ruby speaks kindly to others. Kindly. Is kindly an adjective? Is it describing a noun? Or is it an adverb in describing how a verb is done? Kindly. Is it an adjective or an adverb? Tell me in the puzzle. It's an adverb. Something that helped me realize it was an adverb was that it had that L-Y. But I also know that it describes how Ruby speaks. Ruby speaks kindly. How does she speak? Kindly. Let's look at the next one. The people sang sweetly. Sweetly. Is sweetly an adjective 
or an adverb? Tell me in the puzzle. It's an adverb. How do you know it's an adverb? It ends in L-Y and it describes how the people sang. And our last one, the Red Hills of Georgia. Red, is red an adjective describing a noun or is it an adverb describing how a verb is done? Tell me in the ad puzzle. It's an adjective. It describes the color of the hills, the red hills. What color were the hills? Red. All right, Smarties, that is it for Module 3, Lesson 10. Remember to keep that growth mindset. Good learners do hard things, and I will see you soon with another Win Wisdom lesson. Happy learning, Smarties.